Welcome again to EDU Endpoint Office Hours. You are in the right place. Um, today we are talking about all the new things that are in Microsoft Intune. Um, and yes, I said Microsoft Intune, not Microsoft Endpoint Manager. We'll talk about that. Um, we've got some learning opportunities to talk about, um, a Linux management update that we uh, wanna, wanna talk about and get your feedback on. Um, and then uh, the topic of the week, Ignite 2022 recap. This was a huge Ignite for Intune. Um, so I think we're gonna try to make this as collaborative as possible. Um, but let me go ahead, Richard, and I will advance forward to mm -hmm. the technical takeoff. So I know I have mentioned this to you guys earlier, um, but the Microsoft technical takeoff is still going on. Um, it's the week of October 24th, I believe, to the 27th. Yep. Um, and the agenda has just been posted. So this is the agenda. Um, the link right here is, should be active. I'll throw this in the chat. Um, go ahead and sign up and get registered for this um, if you have it, uh, because you don't want to miss miss out. This is going to be all level 300, 400 content, um, all related to Intune, and a lot of it's going to be covering uh, the content that was announced at Ignite. So we'll introduce you to that if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and then this is going to be full of deep dives and um, AMAs with the product engineers, marketing folks, um, leadership. I think it's going to be a super event. Um, they are all half days, so it spans four days, but they're half days um, in the morning and they will be recorded. So RSVP to get those those recorded. Um, and the times that you see in the schedule are Pacific time. So great call out. Yes, daylight time. Um, awesome, yeah, so so be sure to RSVP. Next, just a quick call out is that the uh, Windows provisioning team, so the, the owners of Autopilot, um, provisioning packages, all that good stuff, they have published a new survey to learn how customers are provisioning Windows. So I want you guys as um, our our EDU fans, I want y'all to represent education loud and proud with the Windows provisioning survey. Um, you should be able to click that link and it'll take you to the form. Um, you may be using a combination, just choose what you're using the most, whether you're using autopilot, CM, um, combination thereof, or, or provisioning packages, and fill that out um, so that our engineering teams get your feedback as far as uh, Windows provisioning goes in education. Richard, do you want to talk about this one since you just announced it, kind of? Yeah, this was literally just announced. Um, Hours really ago, hot <laughs> off the press. Hot off the press, you're right. Um, so this is our first moment release. And if you saw the rumors months ago about Windows moving to this moment kind of cadence, um, that's what this is. So we announced Windows 11 2022 uh, back in, back what, about a month ago. I guess, and so it's been out for a little bit, but during that announcement, we made a subsequent announcement that there are gonna be new features that are gonna be coming in the November timeframe. Well, we're still in October and we're talking about this. So what, what does this mean? Well, the the first moment release is available today. Um, with, the, with the 10C update, which is today's patch Tuesday. So if you look at every Tuesday of the month, the first Tuesday is the A Tuesday. The second Tuesday is the B Tuesday. That's your typical patch Tuesday where you get all the security updates. The third Tuesday is the C release. And so what we're calling this month 10C, that is the release that will be rolled into 11B. So the second Tuesday of the month, the patch Tuesday for November, We'll actually include everything you see on the screen here. But if you wanna get this today, you can actually download it. You can go to the Microsoft Update Catalog. You can, um, you can have probably, you should be able to seek, seek for it. If you go to Windows Update and do a check for updates, you should be able to get the update as well. And so what's in it? Well, as you can see on the screen, we've got tab file explorer. And a lot of this stuff isn't really secretive. You should have seen the announcements on this. If you didn't, um, we, we announced all this stuff pretty much um, when Windows 11 was, or the Windows 11 2022 update was 
announced, but we've also been putting this stuff into the Insider program builds as well. And so if you've kept up with those, none of this should really be a surprise to you. However, if it is a surprise to you, uh, we do have tab file explorer. So you can now go through and, you know, instead of having, you know, a dozen file explorers like I have, you can now have tabs, which for me, it's going to take a ton of muscle memory to retrain all of that. So start using tabs again for file explorer, but, uh, but that's there now. Uh, suggested actions. Um, I didn't see anything on the suggested actions piece. Um, yeah, and if, if you watch the video and if you go check out the blog post that Garrett put a link to down here, um, it'll it'll explain what the sh what the suggested actions items it's like, are. It's like you hover over text and it's like an email. You can automatically open uh, that in Outlook or it's so it'll yeah. it's predictive AI to tell you those specific tasks you want to what program you would do or what. Awesome. OK. And then for the taskbar overflow. So as you know, with the new taskbar with Windows 11, a lot of the stuff in Windows 10 um isn't there and so because we refactored the taskbar and we basically rebuilt it from the ground up we're starting to add more of those features back and so the the overflow is there but also easy access to task manager which a lot of people complain about that when i right click on my taskbar i can't get to task manager i have to right click on the start menu but the start menu now is in the middle it's not in the far left yes you can move it but come on i need to see some applause reaction like, <laughs> like this is big for us it admins yeah. There we go. One clap. There you go. <laughs> There's two. All right. Uh, share to more devices. So now the, the the share context now is kind of interesting. If you've ever tried to share anything in Windows, it's always been kind of um, minimal in terms of what you can do. But now we're actually adding the capability to share to more devices. So, so the share context menu um, gives you access to share to more things that are in your local network. Um, so that's something that's kind of interesting. There's new. There's some new uh, functionality in the Photos app. Amazon App Store um, via the Windows subsystem for Android. We have some additional uh, functionality there, as well as some new sports and entertainment apps. So some of this stuff, consumery, um, the Tab File Explorer, I think is going to be big for those of us that are IT pros. Um, and then there's, you know, some other stuff as well. Um, but interesting update to to it's it's interesting now that we're going to be doing these moments um, mid year, so you don't have to wait a full calendar year for new updates because again we're only releasing one major update for windows every year but then these moments will be sprinkled in throughout the year and so this is the first of of many that we'll have throughout the, the rest and of the year interesting that it comes so quick after the release of 2022 update yeah and a lot of that has to do with just how we build the os right because yep. the because the os goes to it goes to rtm um like early summer so that mm. OEMs can put the OS on physical hardware for holiday. So when you have that gap between RTM and then you've got, you know, the rest of the year, you have six months till you know, the end of the year, uh, we're still developing, you know, after RTM, like once RTM is done, it doesn't mean we're not, we're stopping. So, so it, it feels like it's really close, but that's because what we released was already in the can for a while. And then we had to, ship this out so uh, yeah so that's the first moment awesome all right we're gonna fast and furious all right so linux so i wanted to talk about this today um not because we do a lot of linux work i don't really do a ton of linux work um but we're adding linux support into into and we've been talking about this for a little bit, not we in endpoint office hours but we as microsoft have been th th this announcement isn't new um, this was published, I think, probably about a month ago. Um, but for this initial release of our Linux management, we are including um, Ubuntu 22.04 or 20.04 LTS as the first um, distros for Linux management. And in this, we're enforcing conditional, or we're giving you the ability to enforce conditional access policies within Microsoft Edge on Linux. Um, we're also adding the ability for you to create device compliance policy um, with rules that, as you can see here on the screen, for allowed distributions, custom compliance, device encryption, and password policy. Um, and you can also apply custom compliance settings using uh, shell scripts. So if you're using like a bash uh, sh shell script, you can use that to discover. And then the JSON files, you can use that to, de to define the custom settings that you want to use. It's very similar to what we already do today with custom compliance settings for Windows. Um, but what you'll notice that's not on here is device configuration. 
Um, right now, it's just for compliance purposes and conditional access. We will be introducing uh, configuration or device configuration settings that you'll be able to configure the device via bash. Um, but what I wanted to get some feedback on, and you can just post this in the chat, is would folks be interested in having our uh, product team come on and talk about um, where they're thinking in terms of heading for Linux management? Um, but also what I would like to get uh, our feedback from, from, especially from our higher ed customers that I know that are probably doing a lot more with Linux than the K-12 side of things, is what would you need um, for a better Linux management experience? Um, and what would make you actually want to use Intune for managing those Linux endpoints? So if you could put that in the chat, um, that'd be helpful to just know if A, it'd be good to have someone come and talk more in depth about what they're doing, but B, if you'd also want to share what you would want in that as well. Okay, move to the next slide. All right, we're already doing that. So that's yeah, Ignite, yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what are we covering? Well, like we said, we're covering everything that was announced at Ignite from Microsoft Intune, Windows 365, Surface. Um, but what we know is that you are going to have a bunch of questions. In fact, you probably saw a lot of, this, a lot of these announcements already. And the first thing you thought of was A, how much is it going to cost? And B, when is it going to be available for education? And the answer to that is, next slide here, click through. Seriously, we don't know. We actually don't know right now because this stuff is so new. And so we are trying to figure out what pricing is gonna look like, and we're trying to figure out what availability 3DU is going to be like. Uh, we just don't know right now. So if you've got a lot of questions for some of these things, we may not have the answers. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about isn't available right now. It's not gonna be available till probably spring. Uh, a lot of what was talked about at night was March 2023, but there's some things that are going to be before that and some things that might be after that. And so we've got some time before all this stuff becomes available. And so as we get closer, one of my ideas here is to try to get some of the PMs to come and talk about some of these features as they get closer to release so you guys can be aware of exactly what, what we're going to be coming out with. I, I get I just want to say really quick, I think this is one of the reasons why we wanted to start an EDU endpoint office hours was to help you guys stay on top of these things and let you know as soon as we know. I, there's always, you know, we're Microsoft and we know everything, but in this case, it's they, there's still a lot of unknown questions. And we've already asked, right, we've already asked the business players, et cetera, about what EDU pricing is, and all of them have come back and said it's still being determined. So we don't have all of the answers, but we want to use this call as a vehicle to get you those answers as quickly as possible. Yep. So here we go. There we go. Buckle up. So the first thing, Microsoft Intune. Um, so if you didn't hear, we've actually introduced something called the Microsoft Intune product family. <laughs> and so what this means is Microsoft Endpoint Manager, no more. There's no more mem. Um, so right now it's Microsoft Intune. And what that means is that really for anything that is basically being managed in the cloud, it's gonna be Microsoft Intune. Um, and, and we say that it's the product family for all things endpoint management, but that could be kind of confusing because you're probably also using SCCM to manage endpoints. Um, well, SCCM hasn't been SCCM for a long time. I still call it that um, just because that's just habit. Um, but Configuration Manager is um, still going to be here. Um, Co-management is still going to be a thing, and you'll still be able to use um, Config Manager. The, the, our tenant attach story doesn't go away. You can still tenant attach. You can still do co-management, uh, Cloud Management Gateway. All the stuff that you're doing today, none of that changes. This is really just more of a marketing slash naming sort of thing. Um, and so uh, Microsoft Intune is just the new name. So eventually what you'll see is in the portal for Intune, and it'll go from Microsoft Endpoint Manager to probably just should, it should just say Microsoft Intune at some point, don't know when. Um, but also there is going to be an intune.microsoft.com um, alias or subdomain that you can go to, to get to the portal. Endpoint.microsoft.com will still work. So that's the, that isn't going anywhere, um, but just another portal name to, to remember, so. But it does simplify it with the rest of the security yeah. suite, right? Um, management kind of falls up under the Microsoft security stack uh, within the marketing realm of Microsoft. And so now that we've got Entra, Purview, Priva, I can see why they named it Microsoft. Intune. I'm just I'm just disappointed we didn't rename it to something that started with a P. 
you know, with curvy like free <laughs> yeah, <pin, pin> <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's, hey guys, by the way, it's not Intunes or iTunes. <laughs> that's right. It, and it's not a capital T. And no capital T. That's capital gets T's. me every time. Gosh, see, see it all the time in emails too, especially from internal people at Microsoft. It's just, it's so funny. Yeah. All right, so that's that's the that's one of the big announcements. Um, but then we also start talking about this advanced management suite. Um, and so, so what is that? Well, remote help was the first of a number of premium add-ons that we will be introducing over the next few months here, but then even going further into 2023, even after March of 2023, there are gonna be some additional add-ons that we didn't really talk about at Ignite. But what we did talk about is what you see on the screen here. So we've got remote help, which again, it's been here for a little bit now. Tunnel for, my, for mobile app management. Microsoft Tunnel has been around for a bit. Um, it was in preview. Um, we did make some additional announcements around uh, Tunnel for mobile app management, which we'll talk about here, in a, here more deeply here in a bit. Uh, but endpoint privilege management, something we haven't talked about very much, and we are, we're going to talk about here, but um, this, this is something that I think is probably out of all of these features, this is probably gonna be the biggest one that we get the most questions about pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. And then advanced endpoint analytics. Um, endpoint analytics has been in product for a long time now, but we're doing some more enhancements to that. So we're, we're basically building on what we've already got with endpoint analytics. So next slide here. So the first thing with remote help is that we've added Android support to it. So when it initially came out, it was only Windows. Now we've got Android support. So you can do initiated um, unattended, you can initiate unattended controls now to an Android device. And so Gary, if you click through, we should have a screenshot here of a um, an Android device that is being remoted into via remote help. And so here you'll be able to, um, you know, if there's like, well, the, the example at Ignite that was given was, you know, you've got like a ski house or something and you might have different properties and um, those properties might be managed by maybe a managed service provider or it could even be managed by you. Um, but you've got a central IT desk that is doing all of this management. And for the check-in of that um, of that experience, for the, for the customer, maybe there's an issue with the check-in device. You might have an Android tablet that um, is being used for that. And they can't get in, they, they can't check in, they can't do something. And so you need to use remote help to um, unattended manage that device. And so this is this is the experience that they showed at the conference. Go ahead and skip ahead. And so the other thing we announced was uh, support for ServiceNow integration into Intune. And so what this is supposed to provide is the ability for you as a IT admin to get a holistic view from a user when you go into the troubleshooting blade within Intune. So if you search a user, from there you can start to see the policies that are being deployed to that user, um, as well as like the compliance app protection apps, all, all that stuff. But at the bottom, you see that red arrow shows that we've got ServiceNow incidents. And so the integration will show what tickets that customer may have opened. So they may have a problem with their device and they may have opened a number of of support tickets. And so your help desk can go and actually see, hey, what is the health of this device from Intune's perspective? But instead of having to flip back and forth between ServiceNow and the Intune console, you can just see directly in here um, how many service incidents are, are opened by this person. All right, what else? So app configuration policies for, oh, so for Microsoft Tunnel for mobile app management. So yeah. So for MAM, um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I don't. You guys post in the chat if this is something that would be interesting to you. I'm not sure how many of you guys are are, lo are looking at or have used uh, Microsoft Tunnel yet because it has been out for a little while. Um, but Tunnel basically provides you the ability to create a VPN tunnel for um, for mobile application management on iOS and Android devices. So those devices don't have to be enrolled. They can just be a personal device that a user is using, and then they can go and download applications from the Play Store or the, the Apple Store. And when they download those apps and they sign into an app with their work or school account, that device can now be mobile application managed. It's not MDM managed. And so in that, in that state, you can then deploy a tunnel, a VPN tunnel. So you might have an application that needs to VPN in to get access to some data. 
And so the tunnel provides that secure connectivity between the app and the on-premises environment um, and the data within that environment. Um, so that, that way the, the user themselves can still use their personal phone, but you as the IT admin know that that connection is secure. And so if this is something that's interesting to you, just post in the chat. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't have any customers that have asked me to set this up. No one's really talked to me about it since it's been released. So I'm uh, just curious what the what the feedback is on your guys' side. Okay, endpoint privilege manage, management. Now, this is something that I think you guys are going to really, really want to get access to probably as soon as it goes into preview, because this is something that everyone asks me about is, how do I elevate a standard user to do something like add a printer? I mean, that's like the number one thing. But then also there's applications, right? Like you've got certain applications that you want them to be able to install, especially in education. I mean, there, might, there might be some application that a teacher or a professor needs their students to run. And as IT admins, we have to package that app and then deploy it to a group. And we've got to do a lot of things when it might only be one teacher and one uh, one class, and it could even be like a small subset of a class that might be using an app. And so in that kind of scenario, it's, you know, you've got to package that thing up for a small subset of your population. Well, now what we're going to give you the ability, you can see right here on the screen, you can right click on an app and say run with elevated access. And what this does is it actually creates a, a business justification screen. Basically, the user is re requesting the ability to elevate to install this app. That request will then go into the Intune portal, and the IT admin can either approve or deny the request. Um, and so that's just one example, but there's also other things that you have to elevate. Like I mentioned printers earlier. In the past, it also used to be like fonts and yeah. just like things like like the like time. Like as a standard user, you can't change your time or your time zone. Um, which is kind of it's kind of strange, but you just you can't do those things. So there's a lot of little things in Windows that as a standard user, you just can't do. And so having the ability to elevate those those things so a user can can get things done um, is going to be huge. And so you as the IT admin will be able to approve or deny those requests. Um, now, there's I've got a ton of questions about like how this is going to be implemented, the technical ramifications of giving someone, you know, just in time admin access. And so there, there's a lot of things that we have questions on that we don't have answers to just yet. Um, and so my plan is to try to get the the PMs that that own this feature to come on and really kind of talk about those things, because I think there are some security implications um, that I'd be really curious to kind of get some answers on. So uh, yeah, I think. Not, I think ahead. like Ramya in her session, she highlighted this and it was really cool because she even showed like the dashboard that shows the reports of all the yeah. business justifications and everything. Like there's a lot of good auditing capabilities. And I do think that this is going to be a critical step for endpoint management teams to help move their organizations closer to that zero trust model. Right. Yeah, I know a lot of customers are also purchasing other products. I know Quest, I think, has something. Yeah. There's a few others. And so if you're paying for a solution that um, that does these things, you know, if you've got into and you've got your you know A3 or A5 sub, then you, you're going to have access. Well, I, let me let me preface that. I mean, this is going to be a <laughs> premium add-on. <laughs> so don't don't quote me on that. I want to cut that. From, I'm going to have to edit the recording. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we actually don't know. We really right don't. Now. Um, but, but 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 I do hope that some of this stuff gets rolled in for at least for, for education. Some of this stuff gets rolled into A3 or A5. Yeah. But again, TBD on on all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what is next? Okay. Advanced endpoint analytics. So um, this we're we're going to start showing things in the console that that. Kind of tie into, I guess, I mean, you can see on the screen that the, we've got this, this tab here that says anomalies. And so when we start to see things that are in the environment that are um, that, that are happening more frequently, I mean, you can you can basically think of this as using like machine learning and AI to um, show things that are happening within the environment that you might not be aware of. Instead of going through every single report within endpoint analytics and then like looking at this, we, we essentially can create those alerts that show up in the console, um, kind of like what you see with Defender for Endpoint when there's some sort of outbreak, you have an alert. Well, now we can do the same thing with an endpoint analytics. So as you can see on the screen here, we've got 
you know, some high severity items and we got some medium severity items. Um, and these can be related to applications. You can have slow devices, you know, slow startup times, things like that. And those will you know, be able to, to surface like how many devices are actually hit by this, this, this item. And so then you can go and drill into the devices that are being impacted. And instead of waiting for support tickets to come through the help desk, you can maybe be a little bit more proactive if you start to see something happen. So, I mean, as an example, like a you could have a device driver that goes out that gets installed and maybe it's causing issues in, within the environment. Maybe, maybe an application update went out and it's causing blue screens. Well, before you'd have to go into endpoint analytics and start to kind of click through things. Um, now you can have just basically a dashboard that shows you all of the anomalies that are happening in the environment. Um, but yeah, so we're going to move on those. Let me just make it clear that what Richard just talked about that summarizes what was announced as far as the advanced management suite. So everything here on out is is kind of outside the scope of that. Yeah. And organizational messages. This is actually something that's not. Um, this has nothing to do with the advanced suite. This is yeah. we just announced this what like a month ago, right? Or a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so what you'll be able to do now is actually send organizational messages um, to your end users. So if you if you've been a Windows admin for a long time, uh, you probably remember NetSend. If you open up a command prompt, type in NetSend, you can start sending like little messages, you know, on your network to the machines. Um, this has this is like that on steroids. Um, so now what we can do is we can go into into and we can create an organizational message, um, and we can we can surface the messages. Actually, actually, can you go back? Yeah, sorry. Um, if you look at the message type column on the left there, notice how we have different places to surface those messages. So you can do a message to the notification area. So like a toast notification in the bottom right where your task, your, your task area is, you can now have a notification pop up right there, which is where most of your notifications come. But then we can also do notifications on the get in within the get started app, which most people don't even use. Um, this will provide now at least some some usage of that app. I don't know if we're going to expand on Get Started to make it more organizationally friendly, so you can put other things in there. I think that would be kind of useful. Um, I'm not sure. We, we've got a lot of feedback on that. I don't know if we're actually going to be doing that or not. Um, but you'll be able to put notifications in there. But also on the taskbar, um, you'll and in the in the moment um, in the moment in the Windows. Uh, moment release that we had today um, and that there's a in, inside the blog post and I think even in that video um, I think there's taskbar notifications that you can actually kind of see uh, that are showing up like on the start like over the start button um, and so you'll start to see like more like what the screenshot shows over here on the right um, with that the taskbar notification um, you know you can see uh, like right in the center of the screen as opposed to off to the right in the in the toast notification area okay go ahead um, to the next one yeah. And so here, this is just some screenshots of how that would look. Um, I think there, this is November, right? This is that when they it said it should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, coming in November. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I mean, everyone asks about, has asked about this over the last, you know, no, six years or so. And so yeah. we finally got this, and so it's it's really cool. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was on the screenshot on the right, where you get like the, the, the mandatory update thing. It's like right over the yeah. start start button. I, I don't know. Um, Carlin has a great question about can these be used as app dependencies? I don't think so. I think these are independent entities in Intune altogether. Um, but I do think that there could be some cool orchestration like, you know, adding this to the Get Started app. So if you think about an autopilot enrolled device and it's a device that you know, the end user enrolled at home or something for this to automatically pop up and actually leverage the get started app in uh, in a more efficient way that, that matters to an organization. I think this is super cool. Um, I threw in the chat. I, this is probably my favorite announcement. Um, I, I love stuff that that focuses on the end user and I think we have something here. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and follow up and hopefully there's future improvements and developments around it. Yeah, just don't abuse it. <laughs> I mean, you can like totally annoy someone too with it. Don't uh, give access to your students. <laughs> right. All right. Let's. What do we got next? Okay, the store of the future. 
So the store of the future is, I mean, as you guys know, we've talked about this already, um, is, you know, in 2023, we're, the store for business or store for education is going away. Um, and so we've, again, we, we've talked about this for a bit, um, and this is already in private preview. Um, public preview is going to be coming here shortly. Um, but we're basically combining the Microsoft Store and Intune into one. Um, this wasn't really a big announcement from Ignite. This is more so the just stuff that we've kind of already been talking about, at least in blogs and things like that. Um, but if you haven't heard, um, effectively what's going to happen is that the store will, basically the store applications will be surfaced as a new application type within your application's blade. And so as you go into the application's blade and you want to deploy a store app, there's going to be a type that you just select from there. And then you'll be able to search for your application that you want to deploy. So you don't have to go into the store for education or store for business, go find the app, synchronize it, wait for the sync to happen. Don't have to do any of that anymore. Um, you basically just go into into and go find the app. Just like you do if you're using Apple and you got a VPP token that's set up, you just search for the app. And it's the same thing with Google. Um, for Android. You just search for the app and then you just kind of deploy it and it just comes directly from their store. Um, well, it's going to effectively be the same kind of thing within Intune. So it's just a direct integration um, without having to do that store for business or store for education integration. And so with that, um, the initial release is going to have just the store applications. Um, but there when when you look at Winget, and I know some of you guys have asked about Winget and deploying apps via Winget. Um, if you've done that, then you know that there's multiple repositories. There's the store repository, which are the applications that Microsoft has approved and we, we know that are good apps. But then there's also a community repository. And the community repository is just whatever anyone wants to upload, they can go ahead and do that. And so if you're using Winget and you install something like Chrome, well, Chrome, if you're doing it through Winget, it's actually coming from the community repository. It's not coming from the store. You might think it is, but it's actually really not. And so if you look at the store repository, there is no Chrome. Google has not published Chrome to the store repository. And so because of that, if you were to do go into Intune and you were to search for Chrome and deploy it through the store, you won't actually find it because it's not in that repository. And so why am I spending a lot of time talking about this? I'm spending time on this because when you first get this, you start looking for apps, you're probably not going to find them um, because a lot of them might actually be in that community repository. The community repository is going to be added at some point, but it's not going to be there in the initial release. And then there's also going to be a third repository, and that'll be your own repository. So as a customer, you can create your own line of business applications, and then you can publish those to your own uh, third-party repository and have your apps there. And so if you wanted to publish Chrome or some of these other applications that are in the community repository, you could do that and then deploy them through the, the store, I'm using quotes here, the store integration, because when you're using those other repositories, they're not technically the store. So we're going to have more on this as we get closer to the release with you know the demo and, and everything like that. Um, but this is the plan moving forward. Um, and if you you have questions about paid apps and things like that, paid app support is gone. We we, we got rid of that a long time ago um, within the store for education, the store for business. That's not coming in this new integration. So if you've got paid apps, you'd have to go through your vendor and they'll have a, a method for you to obviously purchase the app. And then once you have the app, you can deploy that however you would. So for something like something like Photoshop, you're, not, you're never going to see Photoshop in our store that you will be able to deploy because you're going to purchase that through some volume license program, most likely. Um, you might have some ad hoc license that you purchase, but uh, but you won't be delivering that directly with our store integration. You would you could put that in your community repository, or you could put that within your own third party repository, or you would wrap the application and deploy it like you normally do. And really quick, Richard, there's a uh, couple of questions on how this might impact the company portal, both from a deployment perspective and a functionality perspective. Do you know, or could you touch on any of that really quick? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if there's any additional plans with Company Portal. Now, what I do know is that what I, when I was testing this, um, the Company Portal is published, um, but it's published as an online licensed app. And so if you've been dealing with the Company Portal app and deployed that as offline licensed, which if you're not familiar with offline and online licensing, offline licensed apps, um, when you deploy them, they're installed for every user. It's like a per device installation. But when it's an online licensed app, that's per user. So imagine a shared device with multiple users that use that device. Every user would have to wait 
for the company portal app to install because it's an online licensed app. So I don't know, and, and I asked this question to the to the PM. I never got a response on. I'll have to go back and see if I can get one. But I, I've got some questions on really how offline licensed apps will work because as as we we in education typically want per device everything. Um, I think most organizations want per device installation as opposed to per user. Um, so we'll see if we get some clarity on that. But right now, as I've you know been using it. The company portal app is published. It's an online licensed app. And so my understanding with that is that it's going to be it's going to install as per user. Uh, and so that's what I got right now. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, update for business report. So we had Akash come a few weeks back, probably about a month ago, I guess, um, talked about the update compliance V2. Well, on the day of Ignite, they decided to release about 20 different blogs. And one of those blogs was this thing about Windows Update for Business Reports. And so I wake up and I look at this blog post and I'm like, wait, is this something different? <laughs> so you start reading through it. And it's actually the exact same thing. They they just renamed it from Update Compliance to Windows Update for Business Reports. And so the screenshot you see here, we saw how to set this up on the prior call for Update Compliance. And so if you want to go check that out, there's a recording of it. Uh, but uh, effectively, it's just the rebranding of update compliance. Okay, updates planned for the expedite updates feature. So expedite updates, if you don't know, this is a sec this is effectively within Intune. There's a node that says um, uh, there's a node for expedited updates within your your Intune portal, and within that, that's where you can actually publish or deploy an update faster than what your update rings might be set to. So imagine a zero day comes out and your CISO or your IT security team's like, hey, we gotta get this thing deployed right now. Well, you would go into Intune and you would go to the, the Windows expedited updates node. And from within there, you would say that I'm gonna deploy the update that was just released by Microsoft right now. Instead of waiting till patch Tuesday happens or waiting until my deferrals hit for the, the patches that just got released, I'm gonna go today. And, and a lot of customers use it, um, but it only works for security updates. And so the announcements that we made here are that Expedite is gonna be available for non-security quality updates. So what this means is that today, today as, as of you know, the 18th of October, we just released that moment update I just talked about for Windows 11 uh, 2022. Um, well, that moment update, that's actually not a security update, it's a quality update but it's released on the third uh, the third Tuesday of the month. So that's your C release. So if you wanted to expedite that release, you could do that. I don't, I don't actually know today if it's, in, if it's actually in your console, but the idea behind this is that we can get the quality updates expedited as well as the security updates. Um, so that's, that's a huge one. If there's a, if there's a fix that is in that, uh, that C release, and you don't want to wait until the following month's B release because that could be three, four weeks. And if you need that fix right away to fix a, a problem, then you'll want to actually expedite that. So having that is is good. Um, and then there's some device readiness stuff. And then, but there's also a a new um, report that'll be in the Windows Update for Business reports, um, showing how how well the expedite updates are are being deployed within the environment. So you want to check that out too. Yeah, I think just a quick call out, and this is awesome to see because this is the feedback that we've gotten from from all of our customers and, and you guys too. Um, and I think this gets us a step closer to getting off of WSUS, right? Um, and, and letting go of some of that control and moving those those workloads over to Windows Update yep. Business. So I'm, I'm excited. Oh, here's a big one. <laughs> here's a big one that wasn't announced. Um, at least this wasn't was a formal, secret announcement. This wasn't formally announced, but you know, oftentimes, you know, people, at least like me, like we would go to breakout, though, like we would only go to the breakout sessions, right? Like you, you wouldn't go to the Ask the Experts or the Birds of a Feather or those sessions where it's like you sit at a round table and you just kind of talk to people. Um, you know, you go to the breakouts because that's where they're going to give you all of the like the level 300 information, the deep dive stuff. And the Ask the Expert sessions are usually just kind of high level questions. And it's just kind of like, hey, this is my environment and I just have questions about my own thing. And oftentimes it doesn't really pertain to the whole group. 
But in the ask, but the ask the expert sessions that ignite this are actually really good. And in one of those, they they had just announced the advanced management functionality that we've been talking about this this whole time here. But then immediately after that, like probably like half an hour, an hour after that, they had an ask the expert session. Um, and in the ask the expert session, it was sort of leaked that Cloud Labs is is coming, and and it's kind of been a bad leak because we've we've been talking about Labs for a bit, and in the Windows Insider releases, you've been able to actually set the group policies for managing Labs on premises, but the Cloud Labs stuff that was like it was it was talked about as you know to be determined. We had like no idea when it was going to happen. And so at it at the Ask the Expert session, they they mentioned that this is coming probably early spring of 2023, not March, um, but sometime early 2023 is what they're looking at for releasing this. And so what Cloud Labs means is that we can actually do laps through Azure AD. Um, and so that's that's one of like the top things that you know people have been asking us about. Um, and the funny thing is that if you actually do a search for cloud laps on the internet, you'll find a solution. There's a there's a community solution for cloud laps that Literally ties into. Cloud laps. <laughs> it's actually called cloud laps. I don't know what we're going to call this thing. Um, we we might call it. I think internally we're calling it cloud laps, but it could be something different. Um, but um, but the the idea behind this here is that your your local admin password. If you don't know what laps is, um, laps is the it's. It's an it's actually a solution that was built by our uh, MCS team. So our Microsoft Consulting Services team had built this solution for a customer, and it had great traction there. And so we just basically decided to create a a service for it. Uh, it really wasn't a service, but it's more like a a product that was free, uh, kind of like MDT and some of the other old solutions accelerators. And so that solution just was used by so many customers to manage the on-premises local password. Um, the local admin password for all of your your machines, and so instead of having a static local admin password, now we've got a password that you know is going to cycle based on a schedule that that you set. Well, that password, that local admin password, actually gets stored in your domain controller, and that password, um, if you're doing on premises, that's that's great. But in the cloud, well, if I've got all my cloud devices, I've got and I'm trying to move everything up to Azure, I don't have that local admin password stored anymore. So um, so I've got an option where I can create local admin passwords, but if I do that, it's a static password. So what this is going to provide us the, the ability to do is now store that uh, that pass that random local admin password up in the cloud. And so if your help desk needs to get access to a machine and they need the local admin password to get into something, they'll go into you know the Azure AD uh, wherever we store this in Azure AD. It'll be able to go up in there, find the password, and sign into a device with that local admin account. So this is huge. Um, can't wait to see this out there because lots of people have been asking about. It. Yeah, and actually, this um, this one was actually in Matt Call's session um, for I think it's called Security Best Practices for Managing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he um, mentioned he didn't mention a date though. That that was the difference. He didn't. Right? He didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm throwing the link in the chat and starting at the around the 14 minute mark. Um, this one's available on demand. You can go watch it, but he's going to start talking about Cloud Labs here. So. Again, not a full secret anymore. So we felt like we could share it with you. all Yeah, yeah. This isn't um, this that that also is not going to be a premium add-on for Intune. Um, right. You know, so th this so don't think that this is being lumped into the premium add-ons. This is something completely separate. Yep. And it's supposed to be backported to Windows 10, so should be good. All right, updates uh, for Mac OS. What do we got here? We got 15, 14 minutes. So, and we're about halfway through. So, doing great on time. Uh, we got software updates for Mac OS. Um, yeah, we've, we've included the ability to schedule updates and deploy updates through for Mac OS for critical firmware updates, uh, config files, all other types of updates. Um, so, huge. This has been huge. Lots of customers asked for this. Um, so, glad to finally see that there. Um, what do we got next, Garrett? Sorry, um, Jose just shared um, the Windows Laps docs um, in chat, and those were published on 1010. So we might be calling it Windows Laps, not Cloud Laps. Maybe. Thanks, Jose. We're going to go look. 
or or you know we might just call it teams laps or windows something 365 laps who knows okay. uh simplified registration for byo ios and ipad os so we've um made it easier to register the devices um you know we're using we're shifting to a just-in-time registration so we're now going to be using a new platform to build better uh registration flows for the devices so now you'll be able to use the sso extension um, which is now the heart of our conditional access uh, policies. And the company portal now is not required for enrollment um, or Azure AD registration. So that's going to be a huge, a huge win there. Um, but also, oh, actually, uh, Garrett, can you, can you skip one? Unless you want to add something here. I wanted to talk about the DD. DDM stuff. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to, I, I, I'm sorry, I was multicasting. I don't know if you said it, but just know that for iOS enrollment for for BYO devices, we're simplifying that enrollment process so that yeah. you don't require the company portal. That was the only the main thing there. Yeah, and so back at um, the Worldwide Developer Conference in 2021, Apple had announced um, DDM, uh, and so DDM was that device. Damn it, Garrett, what the heck was the name of that? <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the acronym was. Oh. Uh, um, kind of, it was a kind of a yeah. weird name, but, but but effectively what this is going to do is allow, um, it, it allows fewer check-ins for MDM. And when, when, you're, when the device needs to get policies, it's basically just like a faster channel for uh, device policies to come down. Um, and so we're going to start leveraging that now through the settings catalog. Declarative. 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 Yes, it's management. way too big of a word for me to remember. It's almost uh, as bad as Windows updates for business reports. <laughs> Just wait till service back too. Um, and so, yeah, so DDM support now is coming. Um, so that's going to make um, the updates of devices, of the policies coming down the device should be much faster. Yeah. What else we got? Be cool. Oh, and activation lock for Mac OS. We started collecting that uh, back in July. And so they'll release the activation lock. Um, remote action for macOS later this year. Very cool. Uh, lost device support in Android. Um, so that's been in Windows and iOS for a while. Um, now that's going to be on Android dedicated devices. So that's going to be huge. Um, we do have support now for uh, corporate Android. Um, or wait, this is all for lost devices, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything. Is well, the, the, a the AOSP is, is just for the. Um, some of the specific devices that are running a version of Android, uh, like the realware devices, for example, now that now we can manage those. Cool. Okay. Yeah. We had actually announced that prior to Ignite, but just calling it out in case you missed that. Yeah, I think most a lot of this is actually before Ignite. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else we got? Okay, delegated admin use universal print. So now instead of central IT having to do everything with universal print, you will have the ability to delegate the administration of universal print. So if you have branch branch offices, I guess these would be, you know, in most K-12 schools, um, but you could also have branch offices as well. Um, you'll now be able to assign um, our back controls effectively to delegate the administration uh, for universal print. So that's gonna be there. It should be there at uh, end of October, yeah. end of the month. Yeah, first week in November for delegated admin and then end of October for the the oh, partner's job page is going to be enhanced, yeah, with some additional information that I think print admins would like, but cool. Yeah. OK, so Hello for Business Hybrid Cloud Kerberos Trust G. So we're talking about hard to hard to say names. This is definitely one of those. Um, so for Windows Hello for Business, K-12 space, don't see it a lot. Higher ed, get a lot of questions on it. Um, but it was very difficult to configure um, early on um, because if you were doing this with like key trust or if you're using uh, certificate trust with with key trust, um, you, you needed you know, at the time, I think it was like server 2016, 2019 domain controllers. Um, there was a bunch of other dependencies that you needed to get Hello for Business to work, at least in a hybrid environment with an on-premises domain. Um, if you're in the cloud, it's much easier to configure, but on-premises, um, getting access to on-premises resources was was a challenge because you know getting access to Kerberos um, was was the biggest you know, 
thing that we had to deal with. And so what we're doing here is we're basically creating a, a service in the cloud called the, called the Azure AD Kerberos service. And so the way that this works, if we, talk, if we look at the Windows client down in the bottom left, um, that client will communicate to Azure AD and it's going to get a partial TGT to, uh, from the, the Azure AD uh, Kerberos service. And then once it gets that, it's going to communicate back down on prem to the Active Directory domain controller and get, um, get the Kerberos ticket. And so in this, in this scenario, um, we, we basically have simplified the ability to um, take advantage of Hello for Business in a hybrid scenario. So this is the recommended way that we recommend customers to implement Hello for Business in a hybrid environment. If you're cloud only, if you're just Azure AD devices, this does not pertain to you, but those environments are few and far between. Um, most are gonna be in this kind of state, at least in a hybrid state for some time. And so if you're looking at passwordless um, and it's been a challenge for you, um, this can help drastically uh, make that a lot easier. Uh, and so there, there's actually a blog post that you, I think you pulled this screenshot from the blog post that was yeah, I right now. I think there, uh, Garrett, I think in the um, deck, we should probably put a link to each of these announcements, um, yeah. probably just in the notes, and then we'll share the deck out. And so just go to the notes section and click the link to get more information about them. Because the, the blog post on this goes like pretty in depth on exactly what we did and how to go through and configure and all that. So highly recommend you go check that out. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, Windows 365. Um, so there's a new Windows 365 app. You may have seen some stuff over the last maybe month or so around um, the ability to have basically your Windows 365 desktop integrated into your, your desktop. Um, as you probably know, next to the start menu, there's that task view button. Um, it's basically like for your desktops where you can you know, have multiple desktops within your own, your own desktop. Um, but with Windows 365, what we're doing with the, window, the new Windows 365 app is we're integrating so that way you can have your own desktop that you normally use, but then you can have your Windows 365 desktop um, right next to it. And so instead of having to go to like an RDP application and go and try to open it up, it just integrates directly into the operating system. So you can switch back and forth between your native local desktop and the cloud desktop. Um, I was hoping to have this actually installed um, and configured and something to show you guys um, in, in real time, but um, I'm having an issue with my Windows 365 VM, so I wasn't able to do that uh, for the meeting today. Um, but uh, Gary, I want to, I don't know if, it, no, okay, so we don't really have anything uh, more, more to share on that, but yeah. um, but we're also going to start to see uh, single sign-on uh, support for Windows 365 as well. Um, and that should be coming uh, later this year, um, which is what we see here. Um, that's not there right now in the new Windows 365 app, but again, it, it will be coming uh, shortly. Um, the Citrix slide, go, go back one. I wasn't sure if we had this episode slide or not. Um, but the Citrix one, um, this is, I, actually, honestly, I don't have a lot to share on the Citrix piece. Um, what I do know, though, is that in the Intune console and in the connectors, if you go to your tenant admin, you go to connectors, the connector for Citrix HDX Plus is already there. So if you're a Citrix shop and you're looking at Windows 365, there's some integration that's there. There's a huge blog post that kind of goes over this announcement. Um, I just don't have a whole lot to share on it right now. Okay. All right, let's skip forward a couple here. Okay, real-time connectivity on Windows 365. This is available today. Um, in fact, it's really interesting because the VM that I'm having a problem with, I actually used this exact this exact blade to see that I was having a problem with my VM. And, and it actually gives you, it tells you, hey, the connectivity status is unavailable. And then there's a troubleshooter, which you don't see here. There's a troubleshooter you can click into that could that actually does, it doesn't only just troubleshoot and tell you what's wrong, it actually will try to attempt to fix whatever might be wrong. Um, and now it, it tried to fix my thing and told me it fixed it and it actually really didn't, but, uh, but it's- there But is it a, does work, we promise. I, I promise you that, it, <laughs> well, hey, it's in, it's in pre, well, the, What's interesting is that this slide says performance, uh, but if you go back a slide, go back one. Yeah. This one? Uh, it didn't. It didn't move for me. Uh, back one. Now go forward one. Go go forward the next one then. 
Yeah, this one. So the connectivity and usage are there's this preview. Um, you don't have the performance there though. You have connectivity and usage. The other one had performance. It's kind of weird. Um, but what I see on my environment is that there's a, I think it says performance and it says preview next to it. Um, but anyway, what, what, I, what I was calling out here is that this is what I saw in my environment where I've got this unavailable, just so that I can't connect. And then it tells you what's wrong. And in fact, my problem is this, this is not my machine, by the way, but my problem is this exact problem that's on the screen right here. Um, that the side by side stack on the cloud PC is malfunctioning or blocked. And the first thing it says is try to re reprovision the cloud PC. Well, when you do that, it actually just blows the whole PC away. Um, and I was like, well, I don't want to do that. I mean, I could, but I don't need to, right? I wouldn't want to do that. So I went to the troubleshooter and said it fixed it. Go try to, to remote into it. I can't do it. But if I remote into it manually, it looks fine. So it's a weird, it's a, it's a weird issue. But the nice thing about all this is that you've got the ability now to actually see the problems that are in the environment if there is an issue with your cloud PC. And then on the right hand side, you can see the connectivity history. Which uh, kind of leads into the system based alerts too. It does, yeah. So there, there are now, and these have been in there for a while. Uh, but if you go to the alert, if you go to your tenant admin and alerts preview, you should see three alert types um, in there for Windows 365. Um, I don't know if this is going to be expanded on um, for other things, um, but we, I could easily see from an Intune perspective a, a alerting mechanism for things that you might that might be important to you. Um, but right now, the alerts that are in here, you can't create your own alerts. These are pre-canned alerts based on the, your alerts rules that the tab that you see up there. These are alerts that we make for you. Excuse me. Um, and so, though you're starting, you're going to start to see more, I think, come out of this. But this is just for Windows 365 right now. And what else we got? We got one minute. We got Surface. Here, <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to go through Surface. You go through Surface for okay. One. Give you a break. All right. Surface updates. I love that we announced the Surface updates the same day as Ignite. I thought that was super great for us. Um, so Surface Pro 9 has been released. I highly encourage you to go watch the Ignite sessions. Panos um, and another distinguished engineer was doing a great demo of the studio effects that we announced and voice focus, um, which is just super cool technology um, yeah. to drown out background noise. As someone who has young kids in the house, I need a uh, Pro 9 in my life. <laughs> um very very cool stuff surface laptop 5 we also announced um just updated hardware i'll get you all the specs uh we also made an update to the surface studio 2 it's not the surface studio 3 it's the surface studio 2 plus because we just did some updates to it um adaptive accessories these are super cool um if you remember um in school um some students had pencils and they had like the little grippies um, that kind of helped them hold the pencil to write. We've kind of adapted some of that um, for like the classroom pins and things like that. I think this is super cool stuff. So um, really excited about the the new tools and, and accessibility components that we've released here. We also announced this has nothing to do with Surface or Intune really, but the Microsoft Presenter Plus, which is a little clicker uh, that is uh, team certified. So it actually has a mute button and can do a lot of cool functionality. I actually just ordered mine today. Um, I'm now, really excited now, about this. Now, Garrett, why is it the Presenter Plus? I don't know. I really Cause don't. Because we, we didn't have a presenter. We didn't have a presenter at the first, I don't know, but it's worth the plus. But it's the Surface Studio it. 2 Plus. That's right. Okay, because we had a two. It's plus. Microsoft marketing at its finest. Okay. I don't know. Just try and understand the plus nomenclature. <laughs> yeah, don't know. Uh, and then lastly, the Microsoft Audio Doc, which is a another generation. I don't think this is actually replacing the Surface Doc itself, um, Gen 1 or Gen 2. I think this is a separate component. So this is uh, a Surface Doc with a built-in speaker um, that, of course, is team certified. So Omnisonic speakers, premium sound, great stuff. So if you travel a lot and you want to dock at the hotel or something like that, this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll get you this deck with all the links so you can go learn more. Thank you so much for for joining us. This was a huge recap of Ignite. Thank you, Richard, for doing a great job um, highlighting all of the big announcements. Um, we want to use kind of these announcements um, and the things that we talked about today, kind of as our template and our roadmap of of topics going forward for future. Um, office hours calls and we're hope hopefully like Richard said we'll get the PMs we'll get other product leads 
um, in here and we'll hopefully do some deep dives and demos into these individual components. Um, hopefully even prior to release, um, but we'll, we'll do our best for sure after release. So lots of good stuff to look forward to. Uh, would love your feedback. Continue to interact together on the channel and we will see you guys again in two weeks. Yep. Um, happy Halloween early yeah. and uh, have a great, great rest of the week. Bye.